Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the missing uh, sides of a triangle when given a, an oblique triangle in side side angle. Now I know this is side side angle because obviously that was the title of the description of the video, correct? But you know, in reality, whenever I'm given a problem and I even just, and they're asking you to find the missing side lengths, I always like to create a triangle. Now, the best way when I always create a triangle, I always create the same triangle every single time so I always kind of know what my triangle is going to look like, where the side lengths are, and, and so on and so forth. Again, notice that my angles, I'm using the capital letter, as well as my sides, I'm using the lowercase letter. Now, I really don't know what this triangle is going to look like. And once I actually start figuring out the values for my triangle, you're going to see that I'm actually going to draw two different kind of shapes of the triangle based on what the angles are. So anyways, though, the first important, most important thing, though, I think for me at least, I like to, whenever I'm doing the law of signs is to visualize the problem. So I like to go ahead and create my triangle and then fill in the information into the triangle. So A is going to be 16. Here I have 60 degrees and then B is equal to 18. So therefore in this case by doing this you can see that I now have a ratio of A over sine of A and then B and over sine of B where my missing value is going to be the angle B. So rather than using all of my side lengths of my triangle, I'm really only going to be focused on A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. And you can see what I'll do here is I'll create that ratio A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. And the reason why I want to do that is because now you can see that I can evaluate in the value of A here is 16. The sine of A here is 60 degrees. And then I don't have my value for B, or angle B, but I do have my value here, 18. So now I just need to solve for B. So if you didn't watch my other video as far as um, for doing the law of sines for angle side angle or angle angle side, then you would realize that we need to solve for B. To get B off the bottom, or to solve for B, we need to get it off the denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply by the sine of B on both sides. What that's going to do now is that's going to um, lead, get rid of the sine of b off the denominator. Then I have sine of b times 16 divided by sine of 60. Well, to get rid of the 16 over sine of b, to solve for sine of b, I can literally just multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. To save a little room and a little space, I can have sine of b is now equal to 18 times the sine of 60 degrees, all divided by 16. So basically what I did is I reciprocated, and again, I'm just trying to save a little space. Actually, you know what? I'll actually have some space. So let's just write this out. So I have 16 times the sine of, I'm sorry, yep, sine of b. I got actually space. Sine of b divided by the sine of 60. And I'm sorry if you did follow along with me. You're like, oh, I already know what you're doing. I'll be over this really quickly. Um, so again, I'm trying to solve for b. So I'm going to multiply by sine of 60 over 16. And if you remember, this is exactly what I just wrote down. But I'm just showing that I'm doing that. So therefore, now I'm left with sine of b. So therefore, by solving, I now get the sine of b is going to equal whatever 18 times sine of 60 divided by 16 is. So let's go to my calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So I'll do 18 times the sine of 60 and then divide by 16. Now, you're going to want to keep this value in your calculator because I'm going to have to approximate here. So I'm going to write down as many values as I can so you can see what I have in my calculator. But when I'm computing problems like this, I'm always going to want to leave my answer in my calculator because you never want to round into the very, very end. Well, I'm trying to figure out the angle of B. So if I have sine of B is equal, is equal to this decimal or approximate to this decimal, to find B, I need to use the inverse sine. So I'm going to type in inverse sine of second answer, which is basically going to be inverse sine of 0.97. 0.97427, and I get an angle of 76.97. Now, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. So therefore, that's going to be 76.98 degrees. All right? Now, that's the angle B. Now, I took, you know, obviously, you guys know there's going to be two cases. And you could, have, um, you could have looked at the value of H in comparison to A, as well as A over B, to determine if there's two, two um, triangles. But I think the easiest thing to do is to solve for your B and then to check B prime. Now, 
B prime, whenever you have a side, whenever you have side side angle, you always want to check for your double angle if you haven't already determined if you have one or two triangles. So all I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to take 180 degrees and I'm going to subtract 76.98. So therefore, B prime is going to equal 103.02. 103.02. Okay. So now what you can see is if I have 103.02, that's B prime. And what I want you, what I want you to understand here is B, I, so I could either have B be equal to 76.98, or I could have B prime equals 103.02. Well, that can work for both of these triangles. And let me kind of show you. So what we could do is kind of create two cases. So I could say here's case one. Actually, let's do that case two. And here will be case 1. Now, case 1 is going to be just like how we had the triangle. Okay, I have this is 60 degrees, and then this is 76.98. Okay, so this is angle B, this is angle A, and that's angle C. Now, if I wanted to figure out what angle C would be, all I'd simply need to do is do 180 minus 60 minus. 76.98 degrees. So angle C in this case is going to be 180 minus 60 minus 76.98. And I get 43.02. Okay, but you can find an angle C, so it works. So we have a triangle. Now in this case, for B prime, this my triangle's um, my triangle is now going to be uh, an obtuse. So therefore, my triangle is going to look a little bit differently. I can maybe look at maybe have it something look like this. So I'll maybe label this now B and this be my C. So if A is still 60 degrees, B is now 103.02. So to find C, I'm simply just going to do 180. So just like I did before, I'm going to say C in this case is going to be 180 minus 60 degrees minus 103.02. So minus 60 minus 103.02. And I get 16.98. So what you realize is when I go ahead and I have two triangles, or I have an option for two triangles, you always want to find your angle B. But then you want to subtract that from 180 because you could have your angle when the sine of angle could be, you're going to have the sine of an angle is equal for the acute or the obtuse angle, meaning the angle, the triangle in the first or in the second quadrant. The short version of it is just subtract your angle from 180. If you can create a triangle with that angle or the angle subtract from 180, which we call B prime, um, then therefore you have two cases. So now we want to solve for all the missing sides um, given our, those two cases. So now we have this. We know that A is equal to 16 and B is equal to 18. So now all I need to do is find C. Now it's preferred that you go ahead and rather, even though we found our angles um, B, it's preferred that you go ahead and use the ratio with what you already have. So we figured out what C A, angle C is now, but I would use the ratio with A just in case you made a mistake with B. Okay, or even though, and also because we had to round to get to B, so we're going to want to use our exact angle as A, our exact answer with A. So I have A over the sine of 60 degrees is equal to, and again we're looking for C, so it's going to be C over the sine of 43.02. Whereas over here, I'm going to do, uh, it's going to be A over the sine of, why am I writing this down? I'll fill these in later. Keep on getting ahead of myself. A over sine of A is equal to C over the sine of C. OK, so for this first example, though, I know what A is. A is 16. And I know um, angle A, which is 60. I do not know what side length C is, but I know angle C is 43.02. So therefore, to solve for C, I can say if C equals multiply by sine of 43.02 on both sides. So therefore, I have 16. So I have 16 times the sine of 43.02. 
divided by the sine of 60 degrees. So therefore, all I'm simply going to do now is plug this in my calculator. So I'll do 16 times the sine of 43.02, and then divide by the sine of 60 degrees. And I get 12.6, which I can round to the hundredth, which is actually just rounds to 12.660, just 12.6. Over here, my value of A is exactly the same. B is 18. So my A and B, my A is exactly the same. So A is going to be 16. Angle A is 60. However, my C, I don't know what C is, but I do know my new angle is going to be, is, ah, what am I doing? Oh, for this one, I changed it up to B. That one I use C. Huh, OK. I labeled this one differently, and I'm not really sure why. But let's use B and B. <laughs> so why didn't I just call this A? B is 18, and then C. Yeah, I don't know why I changed this up. That could be kind of confusing. I'm sorry about that. So C is 103. And when I created my triangle, I'm not sure why I confused, made that all confusing. But you just basically create the same triangle, but your B is just going to look a little bit differently. I moved this around. Oh, I see what I, oh, OK. Because I wanted, oh, so that's your B prime. I got gotcha. you. So I created this as B prime. Um, B prime is 108, but that's still 18. My bad. So that's C, because C, we don't know what C is. Yeah, OK. All right, so B prime is 103, but B, obviously, B is 18. A is 16 over 60, but here's my new C from B prime. So I don't know what my C is, so therefore, yes, it's still going to be C over sine of C. Sorry about that. Um, so anyways, I don't know what C is, but I know my angle C is 16.98. So therefore, now by solving for C, again, what I'm going to do is multiply by sine of 16.98 on both sides. So I have 16 times the sine of 16.98 divided by the sine of 60. So again, back in my calculator, I'm going to do 16 times the sine of 16.98 and then divide that by the sine of 60. And I get 5.39, so I can round that to the 100. So it would be C equals 5.4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve for the missing parts of a triangle when you have the ambiguous case of two triangles. Thanks. Or two cases and two triangles. Either way, however you want to say it. Hello.